fake panel. Uh, Adam Thompson, criminal defense attorney, was the sheriff's department too quick to jump to the conclusion of accidental death? And could there be conflicts like a connection between somebody at law enforcement and the school or some other reason why they accepted a theory of that, that he went in to get a shoe and then suffocated that everybody else seems to be rolling their eyes in disbelief over? A anyone that believes this kid died accidentally is insane. This kid was murdered. This is a homicide. This is a massive cover-up. I really feel for this family. They need questions answered. This kid didn't just on his own get rolled up in a gym mat and be found that way. He was put there by somebody, obviously. And when they did their own autopsy review, they found that he had blunt trauma, which was done by somebody else. I mean, it's obvious what happened in this case. And it's just a shame that we're at this point and nothing has been done. Now, are the people involved connected in some way to law enforcement? I think there's going to be more information that unfolds because it's very easy, particularly with this new email that just came out, saying who the person might be to investigate this matter and really get the facts we need to get the right people arrested. Well, Lisa Lockwood, you're a famed investigator, author of Undercover Angel. Uh, blood force trauma. Okay, that's what the independent autopsy showed, even though the official autopsy said accidental. Those are two different things. We also heard that blood was found on one of the walls of the gym. The sheriff's office says, well, it's not Kendrick's blood. Well, whose blood is it? If you're having a confrontation with somebody, maybe it's somebody else's blood who's connected to the case. There seems to be so much that we're not getting here. Everything surrounding this case is incredibly suspect. To have them dismiss it right away as asphyxiation, he's rolled up in a gym mat chasing a shoe. Why was he there at that moment? We've got video footage of him entering the gym. We need to get that video footage and find out why he was there. What was the reason? Was he scheduled to meet somebody? Fishing for a shoe? Why was that shoe in there initially? This whole thing is an atrocity, and I absolutely believe he was murdered and thankful that that family decided to do their own investigation and get new results from the pathologist. Well, here's another mystery. Kendrick's High School has tons of surveillance cameras. They have cameras watching the gym, the hallways, the cafeteria. Take a look at how many cameras they have. Look at that. Uh, they, <laughs> okay. But even though they've released a lot of footage, some containing Kendrick, we've seen video of him walking here and there at, uh, in crucial moments, the really crucial video that would solve the case, we haven't seen that. So I want to go back to Victor Blackwell, who's done such extraordinary work on this case. We've got Kendrick in the gym in the minutes leading up to this death. Why don't we have the smoking gun surveillance tape of his actual last moment that would reveal what the heck happened? You know, of the about 38 cameras that are in and around this gym, Jay, the only camera that shows the corner where these mats are, that camera was the only blurred angle. Now, we took it to a, a forensic video analyst who is certified to do this work. He says that it was not intentionally blurred. However, not only was that angle blurred, but it was tilted. The camera was tilted in just a way so that you could not see the tops of the mat. You could see the bottoms of the mats, but anyone on top of them who would have slipped in or been on top of those, you could not see that. Also, we know that these are motion activated. We can see from an angle outside of the gym several students walking into the gym, but no corresponding video for the same time on the other side of that door the hour before Kendrick Johnson walks in. We see him for just a few seconds and then no more. The next time we see him is from footage of the next day when he's being wheeled out on a gurney in a body bag. Now, Natalie Jackson, a criminal defense attorney, you uh, represented Trayvon Martin's family in the Zimmerman case. A grand jury has convened, uh, but that was a few weeks ago that we heard about that. I mean, how long does it take? It, it's not, you know, an investigation of a nature of, you know, the, the Kennedy assassination. I mean, this is basic stuff. Why are we not hearing anything in terms of a grand jury? Um, it just seems like this case is dragging on. Well, Jane, I represented Trayvon with Benjamin Crump. Benjamin Crump is also the attorney for Kendrick Johnson's family. Benjamin is like a dog with a bone. He is not going to let this go. The grand jury is a secret jury, so we don't know what's going on. But I will tell you that I think that um, Attorney Crump, he's going to get answers, and he won't leave without answers. Well, Tiffany Davis Henry, psychotherapist, you just briefly get a sense of this case from a psychoanalytical 
perspective, is something being hidden? Is there a secret here? Oh, for sure. Um, there's been a lot of cover up, and I think the parents, the, the families, the communities around this should not let this go. They need to let every young man across this country know that their lives matter, no matter what color they are. And this case will show that if they keep keep at it and keep really being vigilant about finding answers for Kendrick and his family. Well, the road's getting narrower. Somebody's hiding something seems to be the general agreement. What is it and when will we find out? We're going to stay on top of it next. Chris Brown flies cross country, but not in the G6. Oh, no, he's in trouble. But we're going to tell you this extraordinary development next.